thank you oh, again. Yes. Oh my gosh, thanks. You're just a crazy busy lady, and I admire that so much. Thank you. When I think about being an entrepreneur, I think about stories like this. It's like, but I do like my sleep, so that's where I tend to fall. I like my sleep too. Okay. I, <laughs> I still get some. Okay, that's yes. good. Yes. All right. So tell us who you are. How did we get here? Yeah. Take us through it. Yeah, I'm Karen Hertz, and I am the founder and chief brewista of Holiday Brewing. Um, really, I started Holiday Lee, I, I was working at Coors, so I had beer industry experience. I have an MBA in entrepreneurship, um, and then I ran into health issues. I'm a two-time cancer survivor. I've had melanoma as well as thyroid cancers, and was told I had a severe gluten intolerance, and lived in Colorado, and loved beer, and beer was such a big part of my social life. Sure. It was... Um, you know, I go to sporting events or opera ski or whatever it might be, and I want to have a beer. Absolutely. Um, and so it felt like a piece of that was gone, and, and I tried the other gluten-free beers that were out there, and there just was no great quality gluten-free beers. Okay. So I made my own. I love that so much. <laughs> here we are. That's how we get here Here's today. Here's where we are, yes. And that was, you know, we opened here in February of 2016. Okay. So February we'll be celebrating our ninth anniversary in this in this exact location. Very good. Um, when we opened, we had three beers on tap, and we were open three days a week because I was like, "Will people come to a gluten free brewery?" I'm not really sure. Right. Um, and by the end of the first year, we had ten beers on tap. Wow. We were open every day of the week. Wow. And I was distributing two beers out of the back of my car. Knocking on doors. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So it kind of has been that trajectory ever since blossomed yeah. from yeah. there yeah. for sure i love that so we're sitting in the og location yeah. how did why did you decide to be here in golden so i love this town yeah and i live nearby so yeah. that's very convenient yeah. but i think i live here for the same reasons i thought it would be a great place for a business um my vision i think i always wanted it to be big as in like a big brand that got distributed far and wide but in the beginning, I was just thinking about Colorado. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Golden is awesome because there's highways all right here going in all different directions. Mm -hmm. And it was easy to, for me, especially when I was self-distributing, to get beer down to Denver, up to Boulder, and up to the mountains. Sure. And so oh, that's yeah. really why I thought this was a great sort of central location for those three big you know, big cities near me. Right. Um, you know, now we distribute way beyond that. Um, but I still love it, and I love just the vibe of golden, the feeling of golden, and we're in my bubble. Oh, I live yeah. here. Oh, yeah. I live here. Yeah, so. Especially looking at North Table. Yeah, I mean, how can you go bad. wrong with it's that? It's not too bad back here. Yeah. <laughs> so as a barista, <laughs> is that something uh, self-taught, lots of friends around? I mean, you're a lover of the beverage. It's a yes. big part of your social life. Totally. Take us into that a little bit. I mean, and then I, I think we, you know, when I worked at Coors, I was in logistics okay. primarily. So okay. I was getting beer from here to distributors in the central region. That makes a lot of sense. Um, and that really is where my experience and my knowledge was, was in distribution. I didn't know anything about how to really brew beer. Um, but once I thought about, once I was trying gluten-free beers and was like, God, there's, there has to be something about the ingredients. Yep. I don't really know what's going on, yep. but they're not making yep. good beer. Um, I started looking into brewing, okay. and I started home brewing. Okay. Um, I never went into this as I want to be the brewer. Um, I I always wanted to, to be the seller and the drinker of the beer, but not necessarily the brewer. That's the best gig. <laughs> so, um, but I needed to know enough to be dangerous, and I needed to know enough about the process to just be be part of that piece of it. And I mean, one of the coolest stories just in even thinking about doing this was I was Googling gluten-free grain you can brew with. Yeah. And at that time, this was about 10 years ago, the only company in the whole world was in Fort Collins, Colorado. And it's a woman owned company called Grouse Malt House. Okay. Uh, Twyla Souls started it up there about a year before we started. And I drove up there and we hit it off and oh, she's yeah. amazing. Um, definitely worth you guys talking to. Absolutely. Too. We'd love to. Um, and so we source all of our grain from her here Very cool. locally. And, Very cool. Um, I learned a lot from her because mm -hmm. she had done a lot of the research prior to yeah. me wanting to make a beer. And then we also worked with um, CSU has a fermentation and science school. Yep. So I got to brew some practice batches up there with those guys. Beautiful. Yeah. Really cool. Oh, my God. Yeah. It really is often about that networking piece. Oh, totally. Um, that... And for what it is, right, we often go to the back, like, what advice would you give? And it's always about 
it's networking. Yeah. Right? Oh, um, yeah. Networking for sure. And, and asking people for help. Yes. Because people are willing yes. to help, you and, know? In this community, especially. Oh, so. very much so. In the beer industry, people are like, yes, yeah. I would love to drink beer with you and taste <laughs> and discuss, your tasty yeah. recipe. Absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> cool. I love that. Yeah. You're out making contacts, you're doing your research. Yeah. Obviously, you're brilliant with logistics, and you're like, I'm going to start with this size of system, yeah. and that's enough to prove my point and have a delicious beverage. Yeah, I think one thing, you know, a lot of people think if they want to start a company, they have to know it all, um, and I didn't. And so I found a consultant that helped me with okay. a lot of this process. They helped me with hey, you need high ceilings, you need floor drains. Sure. Like, there's a lot of things to think about in a brewery that I would have had no idea. And then um, he also helped me with, like, this is probably the size you should start with, with what you're thinking. And I did want a package pretty much right away, but, you know, on, on very small scale. Right. So we, you know, he helped me pick out all of that. He even helped me find a brewer. Okay. Um, so, you know, I think for me being okay with asking for help, kind of sure. like we talked about before, and knowing sure. I didn't know a lot of that. Sure. Um, I was open to having someone help me, and um, this guy does it for a living, and, and really helped me with all of that. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Uh, in initially then, how much were you brewing then? Take me from like yeah. zero, zero to five. I feel like year five is when things may have yeah, really Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, it's crazy. So uh, in our first year, we brewed about 250 barrels okay. of beer. Yep. And our second year was about 750. Wow. <laughs> so it, yeah, it so went So the quick. demand was obvious. It went yes. quick, yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, it was wild. Um, so that was crazy. I mean, this year we'll do about 5,200. So we've grown about 15, 1,700% okay. since we've opened. Um, we're yep. still little. Like 5,200 is a little brewery, but it's actually bigger than most breweries out there. It's just compared to a distribution brewery, it's still pretty small. So we got work to do. But um, yeah, we started with this 10 barrel system, okay. 20 barrels of fermentation, okay. um, a couple bright tanks, and then we would package everything in here. We added a ton okay. of capacity in this room. Okay. Um, and then we just actually outgrew this space. So and so really when you moved out, then you open it up to more seating, yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yep. But you can just imagine just the canning line yes. in here. Oh, and it was on wheels, so we'd have to roll it over and yeah, it was uh it was intense. I love that. Did yeah. you ever find yourself then with your brewer like going through any of the process just to be more familiar with it? Oh yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. and like I would yeah. you know, I'd help brew every once yeah. in a while, just to your point, to know the process. Sure. Um but yes, I'm glad it's their job and not mine. At the end of the day, it's a hard job, man. Yeah. It's it's, um, it's not an easy job. Especially when you're stirring the grain. Oh, yeah. It's you, no joke. Do you ever hear any stories about differences from brewer to brewer, like uh, stirring with gluten-free grains versus non-gluten-free? Do you, perhaps they stick more? I don't know. I haven't I heard know, that too much. Here's what I have heard, though, is, well, we use millet and buckwheat in every brew. Um, and the physical size of millet and buckwheat is actually a lot smaller than barley or wheat. Right. And so one of the challenges from the very beginning was um, we were the fifth gluten-free brewery to open, but I had heard from Twyla up at Grouse that these were some of the challenges. And one was grain was going right through um, the mash tun, sure. or they were getting stuck mashes where it would just all clump together and liquid wasn't going through. Yep. Um, and so one of the things I did with CSU is I designed a custom screen and we tested it on their system and okay. it worked. So, you know, there's not a lot really in the process that's all that different in brewing, except we do have a custom screen here for the size of grain that we were brewing with. So, so I have to ask, like, is that part, do you have a patent on that screen? No. That you're, no? And I tried to, I mean, okay, I talked to attorneys, yeah. but um, no, I mean, at the end of the day, they were like, anybody could make, if they'd make it, you know, a millimeter, bajillimeter <laughs> All right. it, they, All right. uh, yeah. All right. Um, At least no, I the asked. Same page. I asked, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no. Okay. Um, and I do think some other gluten free breweries now use something similar. Sure. Yeah. I suppose. Yeah. Um, I think it's a good time. Like, I, I want to ask about, unless you think it's better in the other building, but I, I really, works, I really yeah. got to know, like, 
gluten-free, gluten-reduced, like really take me down uh, that path, right? When you came in, yeah. gluten-free beers, it was kind of like, meh, like maybe it was reacting with things that, that are happening inside of your body that yep. you can't or you shouldn't be or you don't want to. Yeah. And then there's, there's also the diet of gluten-reduced, right. right? Like talk to me a little bit about that difference. Yeah, I think there's a lot of confusion and I think one of my biggest roles is educating people on this and, and what the difference is and why does it matter. Um, and so there's, there's actually a really big difference. So gluten-reduced beers are traditional beers made with barley and wheat mm -hmm. and an enzyme gets dropped in this beer. So you might, it, usually they call it Brewer's Clarity, Brewer, Brewer's Clarex, yep. Clarity Firm. Um, and what that does is it, it was invented to clarify the beer. Right. Uh, because the protein in the beer is what makes it kind of cloudy sometimes. Yep. So it breaks up the protein in the beer, yep. including gluten proteins. What it does is it breaks them up, but it actually still leaves very, very small pieces in the beer. So okay. if you think of a, a gluten protein chain, it gets chopped up, but it's still in the beer. Right. Um, and I think the definitely the intention. When you test it right now, it tests less than 20 parts per million. Okay. Um, so people are like, sweet. We figured out a, yep. a gluten-free beer. Yay, it's great. Um, and they launched it. And they launched it that way. And, you know, people with celiac can drink this. And, and what happened was they got a lot of calls. I'm getting sick. I'm getting sick. I'm getting sick. Um, and so what they found out, and really it was research in Australia that found it, but they essentially looked under a very large microscope and found there was still gluten in the beer, just in smaller pieces. Okay. Um, and so that's when the U.S. said, you can't label it as gluten-free anymore. Okay. Um, it's gluten-reduced, which means the sizes are smaller. Right. But if you have a high intolerance, you can't it's consume not this work. product. Yeah. Okay. Um, I compare it often to all the peanut-reduced products that sure. are on the market as well. Sure. So you get it. Like, it's not really a thing, but they thought it was. And I get, I think the intention was there and was really good. It just didn't sure. work. Um, and so the difference between a gluten-reduced beer and a gluten-free beer is we never yeah. even put gluten anywhere in the process at all. Yeah. So none. So, I mean, our brewers can't even bring a sandwich back here. Like... We don't let any gluten in any of our production facilities ever. Um, and so if you That's don't ever good. put gluten into the beer, you're not going to get gluten out of the beer. Sure. Um, and we have a certification. So there's okay. two breweries in the U.S. with a okay. gluten-free certification, and we're one of them. And what that really means is that an organization comes in, they audit us. Yep. We have testing requirements, training requirements. Okay. Um, it, you know, it's so so I can sleep as, at night as much as our customers because sure, yeah. I want to be sure we're doing it right, yeah. too. And what we have to do, really, yes, we have to test the end product, but because the tests are inaccurate with gluten reduced, we have to test every product that goes into the beer. That's where the big tests happen. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and that's happening? That's happening. At, at the other facilities? At, yeah, both okay. facilities. Oh, at both. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's a lot to think about. But it really is. Yeah. It really is. Especially what I brought up earlier, right? Now going over into different countries that are cleaning. Yes gluten free yeah. but they're gluten reduced but this is studies coming out of Australia, Australia. Yeah. so why wouldn't that translate we're not totally sure yeah. and and i mean and, and it's exactly that like the law in Europe is it tests less than 20 parts per million and that's good enough and that's it and they're uh, yeah. not getting as many phone I'm calls i'm sure they are yeah yeah okay. i'm sure they are yeah um so it's just a matter of probably time until they get enough phone calls or you know i'm not totally sure yeah interesting um, but yeah, hmm. that's, that's been the big difference between U.S. and overseas. What do you? Th what is um, thinking about business plans and whatnot? Yeah. Like total addressable market yeah. and gluten free. Yeah. So you know, I think a lot of people are quick to think like, oh, only one percent of the population yeah. is celiac. Like, yeah. But if you look up any statistics and any recent studies, it's thirty percent. Thirty of the population is gluten free. Thirty. And that's because so then I get of people's attention. Celiac or no, that's, that's everything. That's so every, like okay. you think of any diet, you know, keto, yep, yep, paleo, yep. gluten free, vegan. Yep. Everything is gluten free. So yep. any diet you know of, but outside of that, it's just more and more people are finding they feel better cutting. Gluten sure. Out. Yeah. Sure. And I'm not here to preach like the whole world yep. needs to be gluten free by no. any means, but more and more people are feeling yeah. better. And yeah. and even the rhetoric around our beer has changed since the beginning. You know, in the beginning it was kind of like 
didn't want to try it or they weren't really sure. And now they're like, and it's gluten-free? This is amazing, you know? Um, so it's a matter of proving our brand, but also just educating people on sure. you actually might not be as bloated and you might feel a little bit better. And um, we get that feedback all the time. We get that feedback all the time. I think it'd be really cool to walk up to Go check the out the, big, spot. the big dog. I definitely want to get into like distribution, right? Yep. Growing the facility. Let's get into the... So yeah, we opened this facility in 2019. One of the reasons, you know, we talked about that space really filling out across the street, but the other reason was that was the year that grocery started taking higher ABV liquor or beer, oh, actually yeah. beer. Yeah. Um, that was the year that was allowed in Colorado. Okay. And there were only two self-distributed breweries at the time that um, were picked by King Supers, and we were one of them. And so I went from, you know, in my car delivering to like liquor stores to here's I think it was like 35 King Supers you have to get beer to oh at 1 a.m. New Year's Day, 2019. Wow. Um, and so that's really when we made a big transition, not only to this facility, but to from self-distribution to getting on board with distributors. We had built a sales team by then of sure. people that were helping me deliver beer, helping me take orders. Um, and then it was like, for something that big, every employee, if you have a car, you need Let's to be go. at the brewery at midnight, New awesome. Year's Eve, and we'll all deliver beer. So awesome. that's really how we got that done. But yeah. it was also very clear that we weren't we needed we needed dis distribution partners to help us get the beer out to people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Back up a little bit. We go from a ten barrel brew house to a twenty barrel with six hundred six hundred barrels fermentation tank. Yeah. Six hundred barrel barrels fermentation of fermentation tank. tanks. Yeah. Yes. But Which there were steps seeing. in the middle. So right. remember, we filled out that brewery across the street. Okay. I don't remember the exact number, but I bet you we got close to, you know, 150, 200 barrels over there. And then we just went big and we built this and we built it to grow. So, with, you know, we got the 600 barrels here, but we let we built this space because we were hoping we would grow, right. um, continue growing. And so we, everything from glycol, the floor drains, like we talked about across the street, I knew by then. Um, and so we, we built it ready to add tanks. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so I'll jump then. Let's just jump into, you've got a big crowdfunding campaign yeah. going on. That's got to be a part of it. Totally. This is a huge part of it. You know, we, we built it ready to grow. Uh, we'll be at capacity in this building with what we have by the end of next year. Okay. And it takes that long to order tanks, get them built, get them shipped, get them here and set them up. Mm -hmm. takes a year usually yeah. um, wow. that you don't just plug them in, you know? So there's a lot that goes into adding equipment in a facility this big or a facility like this. And so now's the time we need to start pulling triggers on the equipment that we want and setting up timing and a schedule of when it's going to get delivered next year. Okay. Um, we have new products coming out next year, which also influences, you know, what we need. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talked about packaging. So we have new packaging coming next year, more sustainable packaging coming next year. Right. And that'll impact our packaging line. And we've already ordered all of that equipment and we're already gearing up to do all that too. So we got a lot going on. You do have a lot going on. got a lot You're going very on. Busy woman. Yeah. Very yeah. busy. So what does that look like? You're sitting in nine states right now. Yeah. And so now you're going to go to capacity in the next year. You've got all these mm -hmm. puzzle pieces going into place. What does that look like? Are we going to see 20, 25 states? You'll see. Like, um, you know, our goal is not thin and wide. So it's not, okay. you're not going to see us be in 50 states in two years. Yeah. Um, what you're going to see is a real focus on um, digging roots in the markets that we're in. Mm -hmm. uh, we really think you know, grocery stores don't have gluten-free beer options, and we want to be the gluten-free beer option. Okay. Okay. Uh, we want to be the obvious choice for gluten-free beer. So, and you know, an example might be you think of stout, you think of Guinness, you think of gluten-free, we want you thinking of Paula Daly. Um, and so Absolutely. really we've got to dig roots where we are. We're building great relationships and we're in Kroger's and Target's and Walmart's and Whole Foods and Sprouts. Um, that's where we're going to really focus a lot of our energy and time. Absolutely. Um, and you know, in Colorado, because the chain thing just really happened in 2019. Yeah. It's a different state, but once you get outside of here, everybody buys beer at the grocery store. Like, oh yeah, that's the only place you buy yeah. it. Yeah, or um, gas station. Yeah, or the gas station. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and that was maybe a disadvantage of being from Colorado when we went out of state. Was, you know, I got Coors, I got the logistics down. Sure. Um, you know, Laura's got all the warehousing down. We got all that down, but 
we didn't know chains very well because it wasn't a Colorado thing. Right. So I would say that was one piece that like, I wish I knew more about before we did this, but we're learning so much and we're building those relationships and um, you're gonna see us a lot more and a lot more, you know, chain, chain type stores. Okay. Colorado and everywhere. So yeah, we are the biggest gluten-free brewery in the country. So think about numbers wise, there's about 10,000 craft breweries in the US mm -hmm. um, and 14 are gluten-free. That's it. <laughs> and of the 14, Holiday is the biggest. So we are the biggest volume. We're in the biggest building. Um, but our favorite blonde is the number one gluten-free yeah. beer in the U.S. And we're only in nine states. And you're so only there's a lot states. of room to grow, right? So mm -hmm. that's really, you know, where we hope to continue to dominate. Um, you, you have to make great beer to do it. It's not just going to be a great story. We got to be able to make great beer. And these guys do an awesome job, so... I love that. I yeah. think um, it's also about the tools that you're working with. Yeah. You know, you've got a great team behind it and you've got you've great tools minutes, here. Yeah. Is there anything in particular we could highlight really quick that helps make the beer so great outside of? Yeah. I mean, you know, we could talk about the mesh press if you want. Just, uh, a, just, just like really A briefly, really unique right? like, piece. But, yeah. you know, I mean, this is a cool piece of equipment. And, you know, the reason not every brewery has it is because it's expensive. But... So in terms of a um, return on investment, yeah, for us it was huge. So this is called a mash press. Yep. Uh, about 20 breweries in the country have it. Two in Colorado have something like this. Um, but really what it does is it squeezes the water and grain together to wring out as much of the sugar and liquid as we possibly can before it goes into the boil kettle. Um, and the reason it's valuable to us, it's valuable to any brewery because it makes you more efficient. Right. But for us, our grains are more expensive, um, just supply and demand, and they're less efficient. And so something like this really made sense when you put it on pen and paper and did right. the math. Right. Um, and the other beauty of this is it really keeps our beers consistent. Right. You know, when you're mixing, like, did you get it all? Did you not? Did you, you know, and really here we're, we are keeping it's our there. beers real consistent. So um, I, I love all of that about it. It's been great for us. I think it, you know, with the, with the awards we've won, it, it speaks to the quality. It's definitely these guys and our brew team that um, get the credit, no doubt. Yeah. Uh, but having the right tools helps a lot. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so with that, Tell us a little bit more of what that looks like. You've got a big campaign going right now. Why did you decide to go that route? Yeah. Um, yeah. And let's start there. Why okay, so I've done raises before. Okay. I've done seed rounds before. Yep. I've raised a little over $6 million previously to help build this facility okay. by this equipment. Um, I think a couple reasons. One was I had a lot of customers asking. They don't have the minimum $100,000. They have $1,000 but they want to be a part of it. Yeah. And, um, you know, from our side, this makes them even bigger ambassadors for our brand. And I can't be in nine states at once, right? right? And our marketing team can't be in nine states at once. And so now we can really utilize this army of evangelists to preach the holiday word out there. That's and true. so, yeah. Um, yeah, we opened it up two weeks ago. It's been number one on the Start Engine campaign portal in the country for the last two weeks, we just broke, we're almost at 600,000. Wow. Our goal is at 1.2 million. Okay. Um, so it's going quick, which is awesome. I mean, it's, oh yeah. it just reemphasizes that there were a lot of people out there that really wanted to be a part of this, Absolutely. Um, but maybe didn't have a million dollars to invest. And um, <laughs> so I love the marketing side of it, the ambassador side okay. of it. Um, and then it's also gonna help fuel, you know, some of these new products and innovations that we wanna do. Should we look at packaging? Yeah, let's look at packaging. Okay. So uh, Chelsea and I were on the startup engine yesterday. You got it. I think my favorite part is totally that like that ambassador program, right? Yeah, like any, it's it, cool. Literally anybody on the street, right? That's why you give away swag. That's why. Totally. You know, so people are just they're just out there. They're just doing it because you connect. With, you're a very uh, easy person to connect Thank to. You. Like you have like, great energy yeah. about you, right? Like yeah. and you're giving. Oh. And it, oh yeah. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. I love that. A little tight for my noggin. I was yes, like, ah. I know they are tight. <laughs> That's okay. You know, okay. yeah, for short term, they work. They work. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, I so think I there's that. a lot that people can connect with around Holiday Lee, whether it's gluten free 
or cancer or women owned mm -hmm. or any of that. And, and I'll tell you, like in my rounds previous, I have a couple of women investors, but I have a theory and that's just that women are doing so much better in the workplace and we're getting promoted and we're making more money, but it's going to take a full generation of making that level of money to be able to invest, right? you know, at the same level. And so I, I liked the idea of bringing in more women as well as investors and, and maybe at a lower level, that's how we could do it. So. You know, I just think overall it resonates with kind of my people, you know? Yeah. Um, and Holla Daily's people. Yeah. And it, so it feels really good to try it and then see the response that we're yeah. seeing. Yeah. What about in the beginning? Was there, you know, being a woman yeah. in a very male dominated industry? Yeah. Um, you know, I get that a lot. I get sure. that question a sure. lot. Um, sure. I chose from the very beginning to not overthink it and not That's and us. maybe even naively but I was like I am not going to dwell or feel like a victim or worry about what they think yeah instead like where are my advantages in this and I'll tell you like if I like companies will have a pitch day you know one of these chains or I go to a, a beer conference but at these chains you get 10 minutes and a brewery comes in and a brewery comes in and a brewery comes in right so they get 10 breweries in a day yep um, and everybody leaves, and I thought at the end of the day, like, who are they going to remember? Are they going to remember the gluten-free blonde lady or every dude in a beard with a plaid shirt on? Like, <laughs> what's the advantage, you know? And so where can I, you know, utilize that and lean into it rather than feel sorry for myself or oh, worry so about much. it? Um, and so I often just lean in that way and sure. think, you know what? they're going to remember me. Good or bad, they're going to remember me. And um, and I hope in most cases it's good. I mean, I, I would have to argue that I think it's good. Yeah. I, it's good. The Thank world you. has said it's good. Thank you. Yes. Good. I love that. So far. Yes. yes. No, yeah. That's great. Thank um, you. You know, one just really cool, unique Please. thing while we're on the women Please. subject is we talked about like the 10,000 breweries in the U.S. Yeah. We're the only certified women-owned brewery in the country, period. Um, how is that possible? Right? So 3% of breweries are majority women-owned. Okay. But I do think that, um, you know, I think this certification is unique because even though it's 3% are owned by women, there's not a huge value to them to pay for it and go through the process of getting certified. It's not easy. Right. They want, like, your dog's blood type. And, I mean, you name it, they want it. Uh, yeah. Um, and for us, it was really valuable. I touched my microphone, sorry. For us, it was really valuable because we knew we were going to be in distribution. Okay. And a lot of, you know, chains and liquor stores have women and diverse owned initiatives. And so we wanted them to know, hey, you've got an option in the beer aisle because you okay. don't have a lot, right? right? And so we wanted to be an available diverse owned brand in, in the beer aisle in distribution. Yeah. So it made sense for our business plan. We're like, you know, a lot of these breweries are just tap rooms. They're just great, awesome, small community tap rooms. Right. It, it doesn't benefit them to go that extra step. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Unless, unless they're going as a distribution. Exactly. Group, then absolutely go for it. So I think that's, you know, that's one of the differences between Huge a brewery that's away. really focused on distribution versus sure. you have an awesome tap room. And you can do it however you want to do it. But right. from the beginning, we want it to be a distribution. Very Heavy good. brewery. I mean, it makes sense, yeah. right? If, if the goal is, um, this is what you're going to do, yeah, right? Yep. That's the long game. Well, and you want consumers to know too, like, yeah. especially now, consumers really appreciate efforts around supporting diverse and women-owned brands. So why wouldn't you let them know? Why wouldn't hey, you let we're them out know? there. Yeah. 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 Was it always that way from the beginning? Your why? Was that your why? Oh, totally. I mean, the why really was, um, I, I, like I like to say it's selfish, but I just wanted to have beer with my friends and my family. Yes, yes. And, um, you know, at social events where it's a beer type event, a baseball game, a football game, yep. opera ski. Yeah. Um, and really for me, like I'm a beer drinker, so kind of every event is a beer event for me, but <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you get it. But even yeah, for yeah. other people, good and if you're gluten free, it sucks and it already sucks to be gluten free. Like. Your friends aren't sure if they can have you over for dinner because right. they don't want to get you sick. And like, 
where do you want to go for dinner out to the restaurant? Like you're the high maintenance one. And so it's like one less thing. Yeah. You don't have to be high maintenance. I brought one. my own beer, guys. Yep. It's We're good. Actually, I'm in nine states, so we could just go to those nine Let's states. Let's go get be yeah. beer to people and then they that. can just enjoy it. And it's one less thing they have to worry about. I love that. Yeah. It's very much an inspiration. Thank you. And I love that. Thanks. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. It's fun. Let's check out this cold box. I really want to see. I love, I love conversations about duality. I love juxtaposition, that sort of thing. Yeah. Origin and right. So what we're going to see is literally 2,000 square feet of beginning to to a beer fridge, a, a cold box. Who doesn't yeah. have a refrigerator this size? In 2019 is when we opened this facility, and I got to have a moment in this building by myself. Uh, and I was standing in this room and it occurred to me that the refrigerator was the same size as the entire footprint <laughs> across the street. Right. I questioned myself for a little second there, like, what sure. am I thinking? Um, so that was a really, you know, overwhelming moment for me, but it's, beautiful. it's been awesome. And, and I'm just proud of what we've done. We still have so much work to do, but to your point, like, I really feel like we're building a ton of momentum right now. And getting known and, and all of our hard work is, is starting to pay off, which Love is it. awesome. Yeah. Love it. Okay, so this is something that we do because. Hey, why not? If you could be any beer in the world. If I could be any? Any beer in the world, what beer would you be and why? I kind well, of feel like we're living I mean, out that story. This is kind of a trick question, okay. answer. Okay. So our biggest seller is called The Favorite Blonde and the name of it is because my grandpa called me his favorite blonde. Aww. And um, so he was an eye doctor. So if you look at the label, it's an eye chart yeah. in like an eye doctor's office. Yeah. And that's, that's the story behind the beer. So I'm already a beer. I already got to pick. <laughs> um, I yeah. love that. So, and I, would, I, I can't imagine being any other beer. The favorite blonde I'm happy with. So. Oh my God. Yeah. Pulled up my heartstrings. Oh, thanks. Yeah. That was beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> yeah.